So you guys probably want to know how to make lore like this and how to make it so that it doesn't show when you hold the item because there are some methods on re uh, uh, creating lore that will show all this text when you hover over the item but uh, as you can see it doesn't show the whole thing just the name of the sword and today I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Also, it would be nice if you guys would subscribe to my channel because we are so close at 500 subscribers which enables me to use the community feed to keep you guys updated. For that, we first gonna need to import a world from Mo uh, Mojang Minecraft. This is done with the game test framework by the way. If you don't know what this is, then check out my other videos. There I will explain to you what the game test framework is and how to use it. But first of all, let's import world. Uh, no, from Mojang Minecraft, like this. Okay, so this part is kind of important, because if you're playing on a newer version uh, than uh, 1.19.30, or like, in let's say in the preview, right? If you guys are playing in the preview, there will be no tick event, which we will be using, you know, that makes like, things uh, run each tick. We are gonna use that, but it doesn't exist anymore in the newer versions, so I have to do it uh, a bit different. I will explain it to you, but uh, I will show and link a example when the version actually came uh, comes out. So basically what you guys have to do, for everyone who's kind of familiar, you have to um, use the system class and use system.run to, well, queue a function to the next tick and then invoke the function and like make it run itself indefinitely so it <coughs> well always runs the code on the tick. There's some people that made like their own tick event using this but uh, since we're in the older version we can still use the world.tick event or world.events.tick.subscribe then we can just to a callback function, we don't need any parameters or a, like a how's it called a <coughs> a callback. Actually, we just need uh, the function like this. <coughs> and then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna loop through the players because we want well to set a law for each player. So for const player of world dot get players like this. Oh, I this <coughs> then we're gonna uh, well, we, we want to get the inventory component of the player or let's say container get component inventory and dot container like this Actually, let's call that player container, right? Then we want to make another loop. Um, this one's gonna be a for loop with uh, a with, with like I, you know, with like the, this this method. You will see why. <coughs> I smaller than player container dot size. Uh, so the player con container has a property and it's the size which would be for a player like thing 35 and then i++ plus plus. then we're gonna wanna grab the item with the index item equal to player container dot get item with i so yeah we need actually the uh, index number to get the item and now we can actually, um, so this isn't actually the item, it's a copy of the item, but uh, I'll get in, in, into that later. But what we need to do is item dot, there's just a function for an item just called set lore, and it takes in a, a uh, well, an array of, of strings. So basically, um, for each, so basically for each new line that you want to make, you can, uh, well, separate each element with commas, commas, right? So this would be one line one, 
this will be one two, uh, line two. But you can also use backslash n two. Well, make a new line. So th this would be this would be on the first line, and all of this would be on the second line, right? And this would have the same effect. So what do we? Uh, so what are we gonna do if we wanna only set law for a specific item? So um, I'm gonna use a class here just for convenience, but uh, a normal object would <coughs> also do it. I'm just gonna call it uh, lore item, right? It's gonna have a constructor, and it's gonna take in the ID of the item and the actual lore, and then just this dot ID is equal to ID, and <coughs> this dot lore is equal to lore, then. We can create a new array just for convenience. Let's just say items equal to open array, right? <coughs> and then we can start adding our items. But, and I will explain later. So we can uh, make a constructor call for the lore item, like this, with the ID, um, let's say Minecraft Apple. And the actual law that we wanna add. So <coughs> basically, well, you could use an array here like this and write all your stuff in here and separate it by commas, right? Or you could also um, just use a string and put it inside already existing array brackets. But for convenience, we're again gonna use the array. Here, so this is an item. Now we need to <coughs> let's uh, wait. Let's delete this. Now we need to check if the item has this. Or let's now we need to find the item that is matching one of those lower items. So arrays have a method called find, which well finds the item matching a certain property. So we can just do items dot find. Just gonna take in the callback function. <coughs> so um, now you guys, uh, now it's uh, again different for the newer version. In the newer versions, uh, the ID property of the item was just called ID, but in the newer versions, they actually renamed it to type ID. Wait, <coughs> let me demonstrate. So x dot ID should be item ID. So if you're in the beta, on the preview, this is gonna be type ID, but since we're not in beta, I'm just gonna use ID. So uh, let's actually write that this to a constant. Uh, const found item is equal to this because this will actually return this value, right? <coughs> and then we can set the law for the item. Uh, set no uh, not items item dot set lore set lore and it's going to, uh, we actually made it already an array then we can actually just use the <coughs> found item hello found item dot lore so yeah this would work now we um so this would constantly set the lore for uh the uh, the item and also it's uh, if if the slot is empty it will say that it can't read property of uh, property id of undefined so we're gonna just early return if the item that uh, uh, if the item is well an item and or not an item and uh, has already lore so if not item uh or item dot get lore or not item item get lore then we just continue what continue does is uh well it skips this part and continues the loop it it's basically just like a return 
right? But a return actually breaks the loop, and th that's not what we want to do. So we just continue because continue doesn't break the loop. So if there is no item, and wait, there is already lore. So if there is already lore on the item, or if the item isn't an item, it will just continue. And yeah, that's basically it already. And that's how you set lore for an item in Minecraft. Actually, not quite, because um, I, I said that uh, the item is only a copy, right? And since it's only a copy, we need to set the player container back, or not set lore, set item to the, um, I think it's the index first, so I, and then the item. So this will just, uh, well, override the slot that the item is in. Or So basically you create a copy of the item, change the law of the copy, and set the copy back to that slot where the previous item was. Also, um, if the player has an item in the inventory which is not in this list, you would also have to early return. So, um, if not found item, continue. You could also use the oh, you could also use like the question mark operator, but I think it uh, doesn't look as good. So yeah, this is. Now this is truly it. So this will uh, well set the lore. You can always add new items. Like for example, if I wanna make a new item, let's say uh, iron sword. This will say this is an iron sword. This would also work. Very easy. Very uh, very quick. And uh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. When the new version comes out, I will link a updated version down in the description. And bye.